Achieving financial inclusion for the world's poor is a huge challenge. The Independent Evaluation Group looks at the World Bank's experience in this area, assessing what works, what doesn't, and why. Here's their assessment of all World Bank Group activities supporting financial inclusion. Most poor people rely on unpredictable jobs or are at the mercy of weather for their harvest, which often provides them with money only once or twice a year. Yet, they do not have savings accounts nor the means to borrow. Poor families often send members to faraway cities to work in the hope they would send money home. Let's first look at the facts. Financial inclusion means having access to and using one or more formal financial services. Two billion adults worldwide do not have a bank account. And it is estimated that close to 200 million micro to medium enterprises in developing economies lack access to affordable financial services and credit. Because of this, the World Bank Group has put forward an ambitious vision for achieving universal financial access by 2020. What is the World Bank Group doing to make this vision a reality? Well, quite a bit. To achieve these goals, the World Bank Group has rolled out a sizable financial inclusion program. Between fiscal year 2007 and fiscal year 2013, there have been 884 inclusive finance projects with a total commitment value of $9 billion, representing a 20% increase from previous years. Has this made the poor better off? If we look back at the entire portfolio of the World Bank Group's projects that are geared towards fostering financial inclusion over the last seven years, IEG finds that the World Bank Group has made a strong contribution to promoting financial inclusion, reaching a significant share of microfinance industry. Its support is strategically well aligned with countries' needs, focusing on countries with low inclusion rates. Finally, the World Bank Group's strategic resource allocation has generally avoided oversaturating markets with credit, avoiding situations where the poorest people were getting too far into debt. Overall, the World Bank Group, often through global partnerships, has raised the profile of financial inclusion, shaped standard setting, and influenced national strategies. This is fantastic news. On the whole, yes. But recent large-scale studies showed that financial inclusion does not necessarily lead to poverty reduction as it was hoped. Very few poor people who borrow are better off as a result. The findings for savings, payments and insurance are more positive, but the evidence is extremely limited. In addition, the remaining financially excluded people will live predominantly in rural and remote areas where the provision of financial services becomes expensive. Thus, IEG recommends identifying innovative delivery models that dramatically lower the costs of services through a sequence and evidence-based approach. In recent years, many accounts opened for the poor in mass rollout campaigns are not actively used. Therefore, instead of focusing on headline numbers and impressive statistics, the relevant goal for the World Bank Group should be providing services to everyone who has a productive or beneficial use for them. When the bank group tailors its approach to local conditions, they need to ensure that its programs target and reach the poor. This calls for a more systematic and comprehensive approach to identifying and tackling constraints to financial inclusion, such as barriers to usage and high transaction costs. These new tools can be powerful. By embracing this approach, financial access and inclusion is far more likely to result in significant poverty reduction. For more information, go to ieg.worldbankgroup.org.